Hello, uh, welcome to the uh, Monroe Art Guild Agriculture Her Heritage of Walton County. My name is Conrad Barnes. I uh, have a display here of John Deere and also a display of Deere Acres. Deere Acres is a firm here in Monroe that uh, was purchased by John Deere and used to train trainees back in, in 1955. I was uh, just out of college and this was my first assignment. That's how I got to Monroe. And what I'd like to do now is to show you some of the pictures and some of the things that went on at Deer Acres. Deer Acres is still there, but most of the buildings and so forth that was there when, when it was opened uh, are no longer available. It was open from 1955, January of 1955, all the way through July of 1960. Many of the tractors you see here were not used at Deer Acres, but uh, they, many of them were tested. We operated many of them to get some hours on them while they were being used uh, and, uh, in the field so that we could uh, get some hours to prove the reliability. Over here now we have the, you'll see John Deere Training Center in Monroe, Georgia. That's exactly what it, the building looked like. The building right in here was the classroom session and along here was a service area in which uh, the tractors were serviced. Here's a brochure that was in some of the local magazines back in 1955 and 56 and 57 that uh, was printed uh, in uh, in Atlanta. You can see the different operated equipment and so forth that's being used. Uh, all this equipment was being used at Deer Acres. This equipment was being used at Deer Acres. In fact, that is industrial tractors uh, there. That's a studio picture, but uh, all those tractors with blades and loaders and, and uh, other equipment was used at Deer Acres for training of John Deere salesmen uh, back in 1955 and 56 and 57. Here's a classroom picture of the tractor that this particular tractor here is there with a blade and it was used for the training uh, of those particular ones. You'll see the equipment here. This is a little different, uh, a later version of the equipment that uh, was being used. And one thing I'd like to say is that uh, people from all over the world, many uh, John Deere dealers sent their uh, employees into Monroe, we would pick them up at the airport on Monday morning and then they would be uh, taken back to the airport on Saturday, on Friday afternoon and that way the, uh, uh, they had a week's training. Not only did they do it in the, in the uh, training facility and the classroom, but they also did it in the field work. You'll notice that uh, this particular tractor is hauling dirt and uh, building the dam and so forth for some of the la uh, lakes that uh, it's on Deer Acres. Deer Acres had, and I was involved with 13 different lakes there, everything from half an acre all the way up to 55 acres. That big, big one was known as Big Bass Lake, and that was the one that uh, the city helped with because it was used as a water reservoir for the city. <clears throat> this is where we were doing some of the landscaping and cleaning up an area that was going to be covered by water and many of the operators uh, were the ones that was in the school. Uh, here they are in the classroom and operating the equipment over here. We move on over to this section right here and you can see some of the John Deere units. The yellow ones are considered industrial units and we had quite a few of them at uh, Deer Acres all in the <clears throat> the numbered series, the, the last end of the, of the 70s series, but the 720s or the 20 series and the 30 series was the ones that we had <clears throat> at Deer Acres most of the time. That skitter is one that came along later. <clears throat> I can show you in a few minutes uh, uh, a tractor that helped uh, uh, design the four-wheel drive and the articulated unit that you see here. This is a special model here. It's, uh, it's not only is it uh, LP gas, but it's also uh, uh, what they call a uh, high crop. 
It's uh, used for cultivating crops that grow uh, quite high, and they have a 30-inch clearance underneath. We move on over to this section, and we see that uh, Deer Acres not only had the uh, industrial, and oh, by the way, the industrial division was for the Atlanta branch was created in 1955, and that was the reason for Deer Acres in training uh, for the industrial equipment. Here is it, the ag training system is the same, same dealership. You can see the different ones working. If you wanted to, uh, to see what deer acres look like, this is looking from the Highway 11 uh, uh, over east. And you see the pecan grove and where the tractor, uh, where the tractor repair facility and the classroom was located. The pecan grove is still there, although this has been demolished and the building there has been demolished and to uh, make way for the motel and so forth that's out there now. This is nothing more here than what the classroom sessions of the people that was uh, studying the, the ag equipment and learning uh, some of the sales features and things of like that. Deer Day in Dallas, 1960 was one of the big days for deer. They went from a two-cylinder tractor to an inline engine. The, it was fours and sixes. Uh, Wet sleeve engine, if, uh, if that's maybe a little too technical for some, but they're still using that today. The most power we had in the tractor in 1960, and 59 and 60 was the 830, was about 75, maybe 76 horsepower. Back in 05, Deere introduced a 600 engine in a tractor that was a four-wheel drive of 500 horsepower down in Moultrie. That was what, uh, uh, that's how it has grown in all those years. All the John Deere dealers in worldwide came into this uh, particular session to, uh, to see all the different modeled tractors and so forth that was built. Not only did they get the inline fours and sixes, but they also had fours uh, in the uh, Dubuque section. Here's a John Deere 820. We did not have one of these uh, at Deer Acres because it came along after Deer Acres closed. But, the, but I had a chance to see one and operate one uh, in 1960 and 61 when it was being tested and running different uh, test groups and test farms and so forth to, uh, to see how that worked out. And that is the, uh, really the early heritage of all four-wheel drive tractors that you see with deer today. So you'll see some models and so forth in here uh, that's uh, 164, it's kind of small, but uh, it's still tractors with four-wheel drive like you see here and also one that uh, that has uh, rubber tracks on it. Uh, nothing more than a plaque here from, uh, from Deer. When it's 150, they are celebrating the 175th anniversary this year. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different things going on. Uh, I don't know of any in this particular area, but uh, uh, the former Conyers office, which is now in McDonough, might be planning something. This is nothing more than some, uh, some uh, plaques that I put up uh, fixed uh, just to just to show some of the tractors and things that I worked with in my uh, history with John Deere. Not only did I live uh, in Monroe, but I met my wife here. And after we uh, after we married, I moved to Montgomery and worked in Montgomery, Pensacola, uh, and from Pensacola, uh, I moved to Baltimore, Maryland. Well, I lived in Montgomery for ten years, and then. Uh, then Pensacola and then moved from there to Baltimore and was in Baltimore for at the industrial division there which covered the whole east coast that uh, I traveled for about 15 years. I spent 30 years with deer looking and working with all these tractors and things that uh, and used all the experience that I gained while at Deer Acres because I was here the better part of five years. Now if you wonder what happened to Deer Acres and what's going on there. Deer Acres uh, uh, was sold. It was owned by Mr. Hassel, the region manager of a uh, uh, branch manager there in, in Atlanta, but uh, he, he sold it back in seven, uh, 74, uh, just like the, you see it right here. It was sold in 74 and then uh, later on it was uh, uh, sold again and then uh, back in 1987 some uh, 
the conference center that some was that the people that bought it was going to make a conference center and do some other things with it uh, here listed on the sheet of paper here it uh, I was trying to uh, trying to see if there was uh, JC Brogdon and Brogdon Realty developer directors motel and conference center I don't know what happened after that but uh, that was uh, one of the things that went on one other thing I'd like to stress too is that uh, here in North Georgia there's a two cylinder club. It's for anybody that wants to, wants to join. It doesn't have to be a two cylinder tractor. It can be any kind of vintage tractor. Uh, there's been some articles in the Walton Tribune about them. And that way uh, uh, I have some uh, other forms in here that to announce it and it will be uh, some uh, uh, joining some uh, forms to join uh, and you, it, it, we can make them available if you uh, choose to get involved with the North Georgia Two Cylinder Club. Around here now we see uh, some other things, uh, some other tractors and so forth is located on the board here and one thing I call attention to is that the Postal Department uh, one time recognized uh, deer as being happy birthday and 200 and of course I got some of those postmarks uh, there uh, uh, from the Moline post office all the, the factory that uh, the original John Deere factory is located in Waterloo Iowa and uh, that's uh, what this particular model tractor is It's called a Waterloo tractor that that is the uh, the horizontal engines the vertical engines uh, piston engines are all uh, Dubuque engines factory that was built to build this particular tractor after the war was over and they started production in 1949. And on this table now we see uh, not only the tractor, this is the largest tractor they had in, this, in the uh, uh, row crop series and the different equipment that went with it. Not only the trailer but the grain drill, the smoothing harrow, that's the one they use just before they come back and plant and of course the round baler. Now the round baler was not available in the early, uh, in the 50s, late 50s, and they were all square bales and believe it or not, I, I pulled many of them off and stacked them on a wagon and took them to the barn there at Deer Acres in order to put them up in the loft. Now you'll see a, uh, also a four bottom uh, plow over there. All this equipment went with those tractors that you see, that you see right here. Tractors, this was used at Deer Acres, that's a, a 530 series, that's one, uh, one of the last uh, two-cylinder models that was built uh, by Waterloo, and we had a, quite a few of them at uh, Deer Acres. One time at uh, Deer Acres, we had what they called a farmerama, and all this equipment you see here was, uh, was located uh, around in different places uh, uh, there in, uh, at Deer Acres. Not only did they harvest cotton, but they uh, cut hay and used all the equipment that uh, used to plow, plant, harrow, and, uh, and harvest. We had at that time 225 tractors that were located in the program, and that way we could uh, have a tractor for each one of the implements, and that worked out real well. The, a lot of people still come up to me and tell about going to Farmerama in 1958. These particular tractors right here, this is the one that you saw in the picture on the far side when you first started. <coughs> it's a uh, 440, that was first the industrial unit. We tested them and, and ran them at Deer Acres and wound up uh, uh, with several ones there. They had two different style blades, one that was mounted on the inside, uh, but the, the width of the mold board was the same, and then one that mounted on the outside uh, just uh, whichever one the dealer wanted or decided he needed to order. This particular unit here was not used as a 1010 uh, uh, crawler. That was one that was introduced in 1960. But we had several of them at Deer Acres that we ran to put ours on to check the reliability. Riding tractor, this a tractor cycle. I've, I rebuilt this particular one so that you could uh, get an idea of what they looked like and I my kids one time had a John Deere doll, so I just put it on there to make it look uh, make it look authentic. Move over here now to uh, to the display case. You'll see several different items in here. <coughs> uh, 
and every one of them uh, has something to do uh, either testing or working at Deer Acres. This is the one that uh, the uh, really the makes my heart tingle is the 830 because uh, I spent so many hours on operating that particular tractor. It, uh, we were pulling the scraper as you saw when you first began uh, a nine yard scraper and I used that to build uh, uh, parallel terraces all over Deer Acres because in those days they wanted to get back to four row equipment uh, or wanted to begin using four row equipment and we had to make parallel terraces that we could get that four row equipment on and then I spent a lot of time operating the tractor doing that. Julian Brown, many of you might remember Julian from Conservation Service, he was the one that laid out the uh, designs and so forth and then in the, all the grade stakes and I worked from that. This particular unit here is a little smaller than the one that the 830 here it was used to pull sheep foot rollers and harrows and, and things of that nature so while we compacted material. This particular one was tested at Deer Acres, although it wasn't used there because it's an inline engine. It's a 5010. The only thing I can say about that is while I was in Alabama, it was, it was one of the be, uh, good sellers to the contractors because they use it uh, to, to draw bar work to pull in the big harrows, cutting harrows, and to mix the soil and things of that nature so they could compact it and get it down to the compactness that they wanted. The North Georgia Two Cylinder Club uh, is uh, also uh, an organization that uh, located here in which I'm a member. We are now promoting uh, uh, a drawing, $5, you can get a ticket for you uh, win a tractor, a 430 tractor, which is a great one. Or $3,500 cash, your, your, your choice. One of the others here that you see when you first come in is nothing more than a, another high crop, but this is one of the big tractors that is a, a high crop. This tractor is, a, is one that was sold quite extensively uh, in Florida as well as in uh, California for uh, any row crops and things of that nature. That, uh, that, that one is a is a 630, which is a, a not quite the horsepower of the 730 or the 830, but it's a, it's a row crop tractor, and you notice that uh, the draw bar is down below on that one, so it always pulling the front end down rather than raising it up. So, one thing I haven't mentioned is the John Deere Village. It's over to the side here. That's nothing more than uh, different uh, buildings and so forth, replicating the. Uh, what uh, buildings looked like back in the early part of the century, I suppose. Anyway, uh, uh, I've enjoyed the, using this because it's, uh, you know, up in Iowa, it gets pretty cold, and this is the one that uh, that's always showing a little snow and so forth around uh, on these different buildings that you see with the different roofs and, and things of that nature. Just generalized. Uh, information on Deer Acres and uh, tractors that were used there and John Deere dealers uh, as they constituted back in 1950s, especially the late 50s, there were a John Deere dealer here in Monroe uh, at one time that uh, we worked with uh, in the 50s. It was uh, Hicks Bird. Not only was a John Deere dealer, but he was a Studebaker dealer and I think uh, a Dodge car and truck dealer also. But uh, the equipment on the uh, the books on the uh, table are ones that can be opened and looked at. Many pictures are in there about John Deere that was used and a lot of workings that were going on at uh, Deere Acres. Uh, not only will you see that, but if you look real close, you'll see, uh, you, you see uh, you're truly on a couple of them because I was a young man then and they kept me on one all the time. But you're free to uh, look at them and, and to go through them and see what it looked like back in the uh, in the 50s. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and I hope you uh, enjoy it. Welcome, uh, we welcome you to the uh, Art uh, Guild. Come on down. We're we're here through May the 30th, uh, from 10 in the morning to to two, uh, maybe three in the day. I'm not sure the the exact, but it's open daily, uh, and a while on Saturday. So the best thing to do would be to call to get the schedule. Thank you so much for listening and have a good day.